Hello guys, some larger Laravel projects are worth dividing into modules. For example, you have an institution, big institution like university or company with different departments. Imagine a demo project with university where student admission is handled by one group of people like administration and then examination is handled by another group of people like teacher and exam professors and they work totally separately. And it makes sense to separate the code of that project into modules where in theory different developers or development teams could handle different modules without interacting to each other or with minimum interaction. In this video, I will show you three approaches, three ways how to do that in Laravel. Two of them will be external packages, and the third one will be that you can have modules without any external package at all. So we will discuss the differences between those three approaches. Also, I will show you how modules can interact with each other without touching specifically the code of each other. And also, at the end of this video, I will philosophize on whether it's worth to have modules in your application. Let's dive in. So the most popular option for Laravel projects to divide them into modules is this package by Nicholas Widard, Laravel modules. This is its website with quick example. The main thing you need to know is that you run PHP Artisan module make, and then it generates you pretty much mini Laravel application inside of one of the modules. So this is exactly what I have in this demo project. So we have modules, student admission, and then you have familiar files and folders, app HTTP controllers, requests, listeners, models, policies, migrations, and others. And the way how it all is tied together in the main composer JSON, there's this line of merge plugin. You don't really even need to know what is happening under the hood, but basically it's taking the composer JSON generated with each module, which looks like this. You can of course customize the name and the vendor, but auto load of app folders with databases and with tests with specific namespace. This is what allows to have separate modules, but still working together in one Laravel application. And then if you need a controller or a model inside of specific module, there are specific artisan commands. So for example, in this package, there's module prefix with make model, make controller, make policy or whatever. Then you specify the name and then you specify the module specifically where to generate that. And if we do exactly that, and then open that project PHP file, then you will see the downside of that specific package. By default, the structures and the internals of the files are not the same as default Laravel. That package generates quite a lot of things in opinionated way, maybe perhaps from older Laravel structures or for reusability. So with many cases, what I encountered while creating that demo project is I was doing this. So delete this, delete that, or common things out, and then proceeding with the model or with the controller. Of course, the package allows you to generate the stubs, publish the stubs, and then edit them like templates for all the files, but it takes quite a lot of work to set it all up intentionally for your guidelines, for your structure that you want to proceed with. But in the end, when you work with specific module, you are inside of controller, typical Laravel controller. Maybe this one is not that typical, the blade file with prefix, but all in all, everything else is pretty familiar to you as Laravel developer. So nothing really fancy when working with specific module, you are inside of mini Laravel application. The only question is how those modules should communicate with each other. You cannot just do from application controller, start using eloquent models from another module. This would kind of be the whole purpose of separation because in theory, one module should know minimum or know nothing about even existence of another module. So for that, I will show you two concepts. First concepts is events and listeners. So imagine you need to create a grade for a student after the exam. So this is in exams module. And then when storing the grade, you inform the system that grade is recorded. And this is Laravel event. So you don't call anything from any other module and then other modules, whoever may listen to that event and then do whatever they need without interacting with other modules directly. So for that in the student admission module, we have listener 
update student academic record. This is a demo project, so kind of a dummy code. But imagine after the exam is recorded, then you need to recalculate something which affects student academic record, which then affects some library access or something like that. So then you have the grade recorded event from another module. You have the data, what was the event, what was the student, the grade and stuff like that. And then you perform the action from another module that is needed. So this is how one module can inform another module about something. Now, another scenario is what if you need the data from another module? So the same scenario, you need to add a grade to a student and you need a student list, which is from another module. So student admission, student application is something that controls the student model. How do you call it from exams module? So this is the create form and you cannot just call student eloquent model. Instead, a typical thing is to create a service. Every module should expose service it may be other name but basically it exposes the api what it gives to the outside world to another module so for example you create student service which is type hinted in another module in the exams and in that student service you expose for example only the list of students and here for example again it's a simplified example but here you can provide the specific columns that are returned or in what format it's kind of like eloquent api resources in a way and this becomes the only way how other modules can interact and get the data from this module only via that api and not directly with models from that module Again, this is a simplified example, intentional, so you would understand the whole concept. So in this way, we stick to the principle, to the rule, to the goal of minimizing the information, what modules know about each other. So in this case, that module informs only about student service, nothing else. Now let's talk about two other approaches for modularity in Laravel and another package, well-known popular package is Internachi Modular. Both of them actually work with Laravel 12 and both pretty happy with GitHub stars, so more than 1,000 GitHub stars. And to explain that package in action, I will actually read the lesson from the course. So this whole topic comes from my new course, which is Laravel modules and DDD. So I'll talk about DDD in the future lesson on the YouTube channel. So you can get that to our course with video and text and repositories on Laravel daily. Meanwhile, I'm focusing now on the lesson about that Internachi modular package. And let me show you the difference. So basically, when you do compose require of that package, you do make module, which is really similar to the and with art package, but there are two kind of fundamental differences. One difference is that the structure generated by that internachi modular package is slimmer, tighter, smaller, and some files are intentionally missing. And in theory, it's less work to customize something which you don't agree with with that package. So it's intentionally more minimized. Then the other difference fundamentally is the structure of how those modules are tied together. So each module becomes a line in your main require of composer JSON, and then it is loaded in repositories here with app modules folder and whatever is inside here. And as you can see inside we have SRC providers, which basically represents almost like a Laravel package. And this is the philosophy of that Internachi modular package is that each module technically potentially could be offloaded as a separate package, Laravel package to be reused in other Laravel projects. So basically this becomes version one of your module, which is kind of like internal package. Then you can do composer commands on specific module, but then from there you create the files again, like in a typical Laravel application with a bit different syntax instead of module make model like in and with art case, you have make model like in typical Laravel with adding flags for which module to use. And from there, it's all identical. You have controllers, you have models and so on. So this is the main difference between the packages. And then another alternative is no package at all. And here I will read the lesson, the text version of the lesson of modules without external packages. Imagine you can create the structure yourself manually, right? So there's no big deal. You can create modules, you can create subfolder and then 
all the controllers and everything inside. This is possible and you don't need to have specifically some third party package doing that. You can auto load everything yourself. And this is how it's done. In Composer JSON, you just load the modules and then each module you have to have service provider where you register all the folders from that specific module. This can be a longer list. So migrations, routes and views is probably kind of the table stakes the minimum but you can add more. And what it allows you to do if you don't have any external dependency, then you don't have to wait for that package to support some feature that you need or update to newer Laravel version. So for example, if new Laravel version is released, then you have to wait for that package to support that version to be able to update and basically any external dependency on something fundamentally architectural in your project is kind of a pain in the neck because the package may feel like a good fit in the beginning of the project during the installation process when everything is clear, but then you bump into issue one, issue two, issue three, and then that dependency becomes a burden. But it depends, of course, on the scenario. So you may want to go for that freedom to register everything yourself, and then it allows you to do whatever you want inside. So you're not attached to structure of that module. You don't attach to any rules of that package and you are in full control. That's the upside. The downside is that, well, you are in full control yourself, which means that you don't have artisan commands to make migration, make controller, make model inside of that module subfolder with correct namespaces, which those packages provide out of the box. So you have to either create those manually and then manually edit the namespaces inside of each file, or you may create, of course, your own artisan commands or terminal commands or whatever and somewhat automate the process yourself. So as with everything in coding, pros and cons and trade-offs and the choice is yours. Now, finally, the question is, is it worth the hassle? So is it worth to have additional separation because then you need to, well, maintain that separation. If you want to be strict about those modules to restrict the modules from interacting with each other, then it becomes additional work. And for that, I have a specific lesson in the course planning phase, which I think is underrated and very important in every project in general, but specifically if you are at a crossroad of architectural decision, whether to go modules or go DDD or go something else, how to decide. In my opinion, in my personal opinion, if you want to go for modularization of the project, you would see clear modules right away from real life scenario. So are those modules representing real life separate departments, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, which potentially clearly are managed by different people or different departments, so different users, different roles. And then you imagine in your head different developers working totally separately from different countries, time zones and offices without knowing too much about each other's module structure. Of course, it doesn't have to be that strict. So you have to have like API documentations for each module and stuff like that. And there may be exceptions on working together. But generally, I think real life scenario should dictate the decision about modularity or not using modularity at all. In many projects, in fact, in majority of the projects, in my opinion, modules can be a necessary overkill structure just to kind of force the modularity where in real life, all the modules are so interconnected that it becomes a pain to separate them as separate modules. For that case, you just go with regular Laravel application and then divide the subfolders, the namespaces somehow internally in the app folder instead of creating separate modules. What do you think, guys? We can discuss and you can share your experience whether you went in your past with modules one or another package or without the package and did you regret that or not and vice versa. And of course, if you want the full version of the course, so this is one hour course about modules. And then while I was working on that course, some people asked about DDD and I thought to tie it together into two in one course because DDD domain driven design is kind of alternative way to structure bigger projects with different philosophy. And I will explain that in this course, which is available for premium members of Laravel daily. And I will shoot a separate video summarizing the DDD part in a 10 minute video 
here on YouTube. But in the course I go deeper, I give the access to repositories and provide more practical examples. So you can get that course as a premium member of Laravel Daily. I will link that in the description below. I really appreciate because when you're doing that, you're supporting also this YouTube channel so I can continue my mission of creating premium and free content here on YouTube. And I want to continue doing that as long as possible. So I appreciate your support for Laravel Daily. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.